bring in Carl Bernstein, our CNN political commentator and author of A Woman in Charge, The Life of Hillary Rodham Clinton. Also, Matt Lewis, a senior contributor for The Daily Caller and conservative commentator. Carl, great to see you. To what here. did you think of her composure, of her personality, everything that came through? I mean, she sort of ran the gamut of there were times that she looked sarcastic. There were times that she, in fact, let me show you her, her, the different faces of Hillary Clinton during this yesterday. You can see she looks bored at some times, disconnected. There are times that she looks a little uh, incurious. There are times that she looked emotional. What did you think of how she performed? She did a lot more than run the gamut. She ran the show. And we got a real look at President Hillary Clinton, what President Hillary Clinton would be like. She was in command. She knew the facts as she wanted to recite them. She had real context. She was unflappable. She was competent. She knew the terrain. And that's what we would see in a Clinton presidency. But the issue of how she bends facts and whether you call that bending or sometimes veering too far from the literal truth, that's going to be an issue in this campaign and continue to be. But she really bought herself an awful lot of room uh, yesterday, and it was really impressive. You know, Matt Lewis, you come at this a little bit from the conservative side. Uh, you don't know this, but I kind of stalk you on Twitter. And you had some really <laughs> interesting stuff yesterday. In some ways, you go further than Carl. You said not only did she come out on top, in this hearing, you went as far as to say, you know, Hillary Clinton, she has her groove back. You compared it to a, a karma shift in a, in a playoff game where all of a sudden yeah. one team starts to run away with it. You say that's what's happening with Hillary Clinton right now. It seems like it. Wow. She was struggling so bad this summer, and she seemed very unlikable. She just did not seem uh, to be rising to the occasion. I think the turning point was actually Kevin McCarthy's Benghazi gap. If you look at that as a turning point, Ever since then, you have the great debate performance that Hillary had. You had the Joe Biden dropping out. And now this Benghazi, I will call it a performance. I mean, look, I think Republicans have some valid points. They just didn't make them very well yesterday. Uh, maybe there's some legal possibilities that, you know, going back, did Hillary perjure herself yesterday? I mean, that's, that's always a potential possibility. But if you look at this from a, a political optics standpoint, I think she hit a, hit a home run yesterday. And let me just reiterate for the viewers who didn't get the point. Matt's a conservative commentator. Uh, so he's coming at this from that, that side. Repeating. Uh, Carl, yeah. you've studied Hillary Clinton. You've written the sort of definitive biography on her. These past two weeks have been a charmed time. Uh, it, com life. it comes from real work, and it also comes from the real destructiveness of the Republican approach to dealing with, with Hillary Clinton. This hearing yesterday was a travesty. Uh, you'd have to go back in old history to the days of Joe McCarthy and the House on American Activities Committee to find the kind of demagoguery, the kind of badgering and hectoring. Uh, that she underwent yesterday as a result of the excess of the members of, of, of that committee. Uh, it was ugly. It, it, it was disgraceful in terms of what the Congress of the United States ought to be. And she rose above it. Uh, you heard me say uh, to you, actually, I said she was going to make monkeys out of them. It was predictable. And she did. And she managed in the doing of it to take the facts, bend them, just how she wanted them to be interpreted. Are they always literally uh, what we would call the best obtainable version of the truth? Perhaps not. But I mean, isn't another way of saying that a lie? No, David Gergen, <laughs> our colleague here, uh, gave my colleague Bob Woodward a great answer when Bob asked him the other day in, in a symposium, uh, do you trust her? And Gergen says, well, I don't think that she lies. She's careful with the truth. <laughs> Um, I think that's, there's a kind of parsing that goes on. But what we saw in the hearing was context. Her enemies have never understood context. Both Hillary and Bill Clinton do. And unless the Republicans come to understand context, she's going to be the President of the United States if things keep going like they are. Well, well Matt, so if you buy Carl's argument, and in fact, your argument about how well she's doing right now this week and maybe through the primaries, that gets you, I suppose, through the nomination. I do think that there are Republicans out there, there are voters out there who've been looking at Benghazi for a long time and watched these hearings yesterday and saw material that they think supports their side of the argument. What can you see in terms of 
usable substance that Republicans, whoever the nominee is, would use against her in a general election when that time comes? Well, look, I think there were some very legitimate, uh, I think the hearing was legitimate. I think there were some legitimate concerns raised. For example, Ambassador Stevens, were his requests for help, why did Hillary Clinton not even know about that? Why did she argue that this was a video responsible for what happened in Benghazi, not a spontaneous uh, terrorist uprising? There's some discrepancies there. So, but I don't think that Republicans were able, there was no sound bite. I mean, 11 hours of Hillary Clinton talking, you didn't have a single time where there's a sound bite of her saying something like, what difference does it make? Instead, the sound bite you have is her talking about her losing sleep over what happened yeah. there. So. Uh, I think that the average person watching comes away thinking that this is uh, a non-issue and that Hillary has, in fact, passed the test. We had that moment um, because it was one of the more solemn moments and she had to play it emotionally right. So watch her talking about losing sleep. Oh, sorry, we don't have it. Basically, my point is, is that there were questions, whoever helped uh, counsel her, on this, she had to figure out what the line was between being overly emotional, being seeming overly angry, seeming disgusted, seeming yet poignant, and she had to hit the right note. I don't doubt for a minute that she did lose sleep over this. Any, any person in her position uh, who cares about the human beings involved in this would lose sleep over it. And again, by going on the attack the way the Republicans have, they try to dehumanize her. It doesn't work when you go like that. And what's been wrong about the whole Benghazi approach is that this has been a murder trial of Hillary Clinton from the beginning by the right wing of the Republican Party instead of a really serious debate over the policies of the Obama presidency, of her as Secretary of State. They've tried to hang her. Uh, yeah. It's not it, very smart. Matt, I, I, think one of the, I think one of the real problems, honestly, is optics. You have a Southern white man like Trey Gowdy uh, who's essentially asking, interrogating uh, Hillary Clinton. I felt that when it was Martha Roby or some of the female uh, Republicans asking her questions, it was much more effective. I think that the optics were not good for Republicans. And Tammy Duckworth, by the way, on the Democratic side. Mm -hmm. I thought they were asking strong questions. Yeah. All right, Matt, Carl, great to have you here with us.